Good morning. Good morning Today we will be reading 2 Kings chapter 1, 1 through 18, which is the whole chapter. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the de death of Ahab, and Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go, inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall remove, recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel that ye go to inquire of Baal-zebub, the god of Ekron? Now, therefore, saith the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a god in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man that was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? And they answered, and they answered him, He was a hairy man, and girt with the girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on top of a hill. And he spake unto him, Thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee with thy fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed he with him with his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee with thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him with his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of his fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven, and burnt up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he, ro he arose, and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no messenger, there is no god in Israel, to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah has spoken. And Je Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Thank you, Stacia. Wow. I... Uh Got a kick out of something I read just or I saw a, a little a comic of this boy, little little boy. He was uh, planting something in his parents' garden, just a little plant. And his sister was just a, a year or two older than him. And she thought she knew everything. And she said, uh, well, you know, when you get to be an adult, if you're going to plant something, you've got to pray to your gardening angel. So she got that wrong a little bit. But anyway, Dr. David Jeremiah says that when Ahab married Jezebel, he violated every principle of, of his religion, uh, every, every principle that God had ever given to him. Jezebel was a pagan, and she brought all of her pagan religion with her into Israel. And that then went down into the generations as well. So today, uh, I want to talk about the consequences of practical atheism. I'm going to change that title 
if you want to cross out the word paganism and put practical atheism above that or beneath it, we're going to talk about that a little bit more later on. But what is practical atheism? It's when people who claim to know the Lord or who do know the Lord are actually living like they don't believe in him. You know, they're not trusting him for things. And I'll get into more detail uh, later on as this message goes. But uh, God is dealing with a practical atheism of the nation of Israel and especially of King Ahaziah. And he's, we see this in three stages. But the message today is that God means business. God, mean, God means business and uh, he's not kidding around and neither can we. We, can, we need to be serious about our faith. And I don't mean that we should be, you know, sullen and all that kind of thing, but we do need to be about the Lord's business. We should be serious about our faith in the Lord. But we see God dealing with this practical atheism in three stages. The first thing we see is retrograde. And uh, retrograde means when something is weakening, when something is going backward, if it's rotting or degenerating, we call that retrograde. And so we begin with Ahab's death. And I want you to look with me at the first verse now. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Now, first of all, does anybody know who Moab is? He's not one of the most common people in the Bible. Can anybody tell me who Moab was? Yes, yes, they were descendants of Lot. Actually, Moab was Lot's son through his oldest daughter. And now, uh, uh, the reason for that, well, I'll get to the reason later on, but he's Lot's son through his oldest daughter. And then you have the Moabites, and Moab was Lot's son through his younger daughter. And so that means that Lot was not only the son of, uh, that is, uh, Moab was not only the son of Lot, but he was the grandson of Lot. Because he was the son of Lot, but he was also the son of Lot's daughter. That made him his grandson. And that was true of Moab as well. Um, he was not only Lot's son, but he was also the son of Lot's younger daughter. And what had happened is after the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know that uh, these two girls, they start, these two sisters, they started saying, there's no boys for us to marry. How are we ever going to have children and continue the family line? And so this is what they came up with. And so after Ahab's death, we have verse 1, Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. So um, Ahab must have been a fairly strong military leader. He wasn't a very good king. He was a bad man. He, had, he was an evil man and not a very good king. But militarily he was, and you remember God's grace to him. Even though he was evil, he stole Naboth's vineyard and Naboth was put to death and all of that. God still showed grace to Ahab in chapter 20 of 1 Kings when those 33 kings came up and they were going to have a surprise attack against Israel. And God gave Ahab the victory. One king with his army against 33 kings and their armies. And God gave them the victory, not once but twice. Because the kings, after their first defeat, they said, well... You know, uh, their God is the God of the hills, and we fought them in the hills. That's why we, we were defeated. So they said, we'll fight them down in the lowlands. Well, then God gave them a victory again over them. And so God was gracious to this man, as evil as he was. But he wasn't a very good king, but he was fairly strong militarily. And I think that that victory against those 33 kings really established his uh, reputation as a strong military king. Uh, with the other nations around. So that's how it begins. Now look again at verse 1. Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. Now Ahaziah, this is the son of Ahab, fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. Now what is this lattice that he felt? Did he have a garden up there growing lattice? Uh, that's not exactly what it was. But you know that... Uh, in Israel, the houses in ancient Israel all had flat roofs. When we were in Israel, there was just a short part of a day in which uh, some of the people there were explaining this to us as a group. We all knew that that was true, but they showed us what, you know, the, the lath, the layer of lath that was on the bottom of the roof. That was the, the floor of the roof. And then I don't know what they put on top. I can't remember if it was some kind of uh, uh, thatch 
you know, if they thatched the roof with branches and things. I'm not sure what they did to make sure it didn't leak. But at any rate, they had flat roofs. And so it wasn't uncommon for people to go up on top of their roof. You remember that David, when he failed to go to battle, uh, and he stayed in Jerusalem instead, and he went on the roof of his palace, the flat roof, and that's how he spied Bathsheba, and we won't go into that story. And then Peter was on the flat roof of his house when God gave him that great vision that, said, that showed him that Gentiles were going to be saved, and they were going to be added into the church. And, of course, you remember those uh, four men who brought the paralyzed man to Jesus? And uh, they, when they got to where Jesus was, they realized he was in somebody's house, and the house was too crowded. They couldn't get to Jesus, and so what did they do? They climbed on the roof, and they got the paralyzed man up on that roof, and they got over where Jesus was, and they started pulling up the lath, those uh, slats that was in the roof to make a hole. And uh, they, draw, they let him down with a rope and in front of Jesus, and Jesus healed the man, and the man walked out the door. But uh, some preachers say, well, what about the big hole they made in the roof? Well, no problem. They just laid those, laths back, those slats back to where they belonged and put the thatch over the top of it, and that fixed it probably took about three minutes to fix the hole. So this was not unusual, but it turned out that uh, he fell through the lattice in his upper room. Those slats must have been rotten. They must have been weak, and he was up there walking on his roof in the palace, and he fell through and hit the solid stone floor of his upper room, and he was badly, badly injured. And so we see this in verse 2, his decline, both physically and uh, morally, now Ahaziah, verse 2, fell through the lattice of his upper room in Samaria and was injured. So he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Baalzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover from this injury. Now this was a fatal mistake to him. Because instead of going to the Lord, where does he go? He goes to this foreign god, this fake god, Baalzebub. And I think you all know what Baalzebub means. Literally, it's translated the Lord of the Flies. Many, many decades ago, uh, someone wrote a novel with that title, The Lord of the Flies. I've never read it. I probably should sometime. But that's where he got the title. But it can also, mean, it can also be translated a pile of excrement, which draws flies. But at any rate, Beelzebub, this false god of the Philistines, he sent these these uh, messengers to go to a foreign land and, and ask Beelzebub or, or, uh, if, he was going to, if he was going to be healed or not, if he was going to um, live. And so, um, at any rate, Ahaziah, Ahaziah was obviously influenced negatively by his parents, Ahab and Jezebel. You know, when Ahab married Jezebel, she brought in this, these pagan religions. Up until that time, you know, they kind of fought with that a little bit, but uh, they really brought paganism in. And, of course, uh, Ahab and Jezebel were both uh, following these pagan religions, and that's how they raised their son, Ahaziah. And, you know, again, I want to say this, gals, uh, it's very important who you marry, because who you marry is going to affect how you raise your children and so on. And, guys, the same thing. It's very important who you marry because this will affect the rest of your life and the lives of your children. So at any rate, Ahaziah was obviously influenced negatively by his pagan parents, Ahab and Jezebel. And so Israel was in a state of retrograde or decline. And don't let your life get to that place. Don't let your life get into a, a stage of retrograde and decline. Make sure that your walk with the Lord is exciting and, and real and according to God's word and that you're filled with the Holy Spirit and guided by his spirit. And I'll tell you, you have adventures. God will lead you in places you never thought you'd ever go. You'll have adventures. You'll see God doing work in your life that you never thought you'd ever see. But be sure that you marry someone who is a Christian and who is walking with the Lord and that you are too. Because this is how everything began. It started with re retrograde. And we have Ahab's death, and then we have his son Ahaziah's decline, and the whole nation declining with him. 
Now this is followed then by a reprimand from the Lord by the prophet Elijah. And what, is, what are they being reprimanded for? For denying the true God. Look at verse 3 now. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up and meet those messengers, encounter those messengers of the king of Samaria, the ones that Ahab, 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 uh, whatever his name was, I can't say it all of a sudden, Ahaziah. Go and encounter those people. And uh, he said, the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria, the one that he has sent out, and say to them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you're going to inquire of Baals above the God of Ekron? And this is where we get into this practical atheism. So what is practical atheism? It can happen to us. It's when God's people are living as though there is no God. Actually, making decisions without consulting the Lord in prayer and God's word. And I'm guilty of that sometimes. Uh, there are times when this seems like the right thing to do, so I do it. You know, I don't stop and pray about it. I don't check it out with the Lord. And sometimes that gets me in trouble. It's not a good thing to do. Uh, but living as if there is no God. Uh, lacking faith to trust God for daily provision. And uh, living by the world's moral standards, which are really messed up. That's for sure today. That's practical atheism. When, when Christians are actually living like atheists as though there's no God. We've got to be careful about that. We always have to remember to walk with the Lord day by day. So the reprimanded Israel was for denying the true God and for defecting to a false God. Look now at verses 3 through 8. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say to them, Is it because there's no God in Israel that you are going to inquire of Baals above the God of Ekron? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord, You shall not come down from the bed to which you are gone up, but you shall surely die. So Elijah departed. So Ahaziah sealed his own fate by sending those messengers. Verse 5, and when the messengers returned to him, he said to them, why have you come back? In other words, why have you come back so soon? You couldn't have gone there where I sent you and got back this quickly. Why have you come back so soon? Verse 6, so they said to him, a man came to meet us and said to us, go return to the king who sent you and say to him, thus says the Lord, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are sending to inquire of Baals above the God of Ekron? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. You know, someone has said that advice is like mushrooms. Sometimes it's poison. You've got to be careful what, who you get your advice from. The wrong kind can be fatal. Verse 7, then he said to them, what kind of man was it who came up to meet you and told you these words? And so they answered him, a hairy man wearing a leather belt around his waist. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. Elijah must have had long, long, uh, and just scraggly hair, and he must have had a long, long beard, and hairy arms, and hairy legs, a hairy chest, and a hairy back. He was known as a hairy man, I guess. They should have called him Harry. But anyway, so there's the reprimand for defecting to a false god. You know... Uh, so Ahaziah sealed his own fate. In verse 6, it says, So they said to him, A man came up to meet us and said to us, Go return to the king who sent you and say to him, Thus says the Lord, Is it because there is no God in Israel that you're sending to inquire Baals above the God of Ekron? Therefore you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. You shall surely die. He should have gone to Elijah. He should have called for Elijah. He would have gotten an answer but it wouldn't have been the answer that he wanted. And that's why he sent to another God. You know, the, God, the devil doesn't care which God you worship. He really doesn't, as long as it isn't the true God. As long as it isn't the living and true God of the Bible. The devil doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him what gods you worship. If you worship materialism, if you worship uh, some false god or some cult, he doesn't care who you worship or which God you worship as long as it's not the true and living God. So there was 
retrograde, and that led to the reprimand from the Lord through the, through the prophet Elijah. And finally, retribution in verses 19, or 9 through 18, rather, because Ahaziah did not listen to Elijah. Look at verse 9. Then the king sent to him a captain of 50 with his 50 men. So he went up and uh, to him, and there he was sitting on top of the hill. Elijah was, and it must have been a steep hill that they maybe couldn't get up. And he spoke to him, Man of God, the king has said, Come down. So Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, If I'm a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. And the fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Now, why did he do that? Well, I think that Elijah believed that they had come not only to arrest him, but to have him put to death. And I think that probably was the case. And so um, it says in uh, verse 11, then he sent to him Elijah, another captain of 50 with his 50 men. And he answered and said to him, man of God, thus says the king, uh, the king has said, come down quickly. So Elijah answered and said to them, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your fifty men. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. So that's a hundred and two guys that were killed. This now is the retribution. The retrograde led to a reprimand that wasn't listened to. And finally retribution because Ahaziah didn't listen to Elijah. A hundred and two soldiers were dead. Fifty-one would be spared but 102 were dead. You ever, did you notice that all, counting Mount Carmel, Elijah called fire down from heaven three times. And as far as I can remember, there's nobody else in the Bible or in history ever who's called fire down from heaven, but he did it three times. I guess that's what we think about when we think about Elijah. So 102 soldiers were needlessly killed because of they were threatening the, the prophet Elijah. And King Ahaziah was finally dealt with then in verses 13 through 18. And look what the Bible says here. Verse 13, again, he sent a third captain of 50 with his 50 men. And the third captain of 50 went up, and he's smarter than the other two. And he came and fell on his knees before Elijah and pleaded with him and said to him, Man of God, please, let my life and the life of these 50 servants of yours be precious in your sight. Look, fire has come down from heaven and burned up the first two captains of 50 in their 50s. But let my life now be precious in your sight. Verse 15, And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. So he arose and went down with him to the king. And then Elijah said to him, that is to King Ahaz, Ahaziah, thus says the Lord, because you have sent messengers to inquire of Baals above the God of Ekron, is it because there's no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed to which you have gone up, but you shall surely die. So Ahaziah died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken because he had no son. Jehoram became king. In his place, in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And Jehoram, of course, was Ahaziah's brother and the son of, of, of uh, Ahab. Verse 18, now the rest of the acts of Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the king? In fact, we know through archaeology that Ahaziah died from his injuries, from his fall, in 850 B.C., we know the exact year that he died. See, we're not talking about fairy tales here. When we read God's word, we're talking about history. God inspired history and the history of God at work in the world. And we know for a fact that Ahaziah died in the year 850 B.C. from his injuries. But you know, truth is a troublesome thing to an evildoer like Ahaziah. They don't want to hear the truth. It's uncomfortable to them. But true faith enables us to face the music even when we don't like the tune. Proverbs 29, 1 says, He who being often reproved hardens his heart shall um, suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. But then listen 
to Hebrews 3.15. Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Be open to what God is saying to you, no matter what it is. Be open and receive it. God means business. He's not kidding around. So listen to him as he speaks to you and respond accordingly. In fact, I'd like us to bow our heads just this moment again. And uh, first of all, if you're a Christian here today and maybe God is speaking to you about something, listen to what he has to say and respond to it. I have no idea what it might be, but there might be some issue in your life. Just go ahead and uh, listen to what he's saying and respond to it in a positive way. If you are, if there's anyone here who's never accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, I want to urge you to do that. Just, just in your heart today, right now, silently say to him, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know that if I died in my sins, I would go to hell. But you died on that cross for me. You bore my sins and my guilt on that cross. And you rose from the dead. I know you're the living Savior. Lord Jesus, please forgive my sins. Come into my life. And when you do say that to him, when you pray that to him, he will come in and he will save your soul. And you'll become a new person inside. And the exciting thing about that is as you walk with the Lord according to his work, his word, filled with the Holy Spirit day by day. He'll lead you in the greatest adventures. You'll see him do great things. And your life will be an adventure for him. I didn't say that you wouldn't have tragedies, that you won't have sorrows, that you won't have heartaches. You will. But he'll be there to get you through those things as well. But the main thing is that you know Jesus as your Savior so that you can say for sure, if you were to die today, you'd be in heaven with Christ because you are a child of God. If you don't, just receive him right now by faith. Admit you're a sinner, ask him to forgive your sins and to come into your life, and he will. Because the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall not be disappointed, and he will. So, Heavenly Father, I just pray that you guide us all. Help us not to be like Ahaziah, living like an atheist, but truly walking according to your will according to your word and, as, and, and according to your leading in our lives through the Holy Spirit. And I pray this all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.